Deborah Ashell is stabbed to death in a bed of blood. Suspects include her husband Gilbert, his secret lover Bambi, and Deborah's secret lover Beau, the pool boy. But a new and shocking twist bumps her 18-year-old son Lane to the top of the list. His involvement in a semi-religious cult that goes by the catchy name, Kill Your Parents. This was now day two. So 24 of the 48 hours Lynch had given us to catch the killer before she terminated us was spent. Having said that, we were already onto our fourth suspect. So we certainly weren't putting our feet up, which is how I usually prefer to investigate. We had to find out exactly what the Kill Your Parents Club was all about, because there's a lot of different ways to interpret that name. You can't be afraid to venture into some dark territories in this job. So we rolled up our sleeves and checked out their website. As of late 2023, the Kill Your Parents cult website has over 200,000 subscribers in over 200 countries. As someone who grew up with dead parents, I found the whole thing very offensive. Teen angst, they call it these days. In my day, we called it being a little shithead. Untrue Crime's overseas splinter unit sat down with the current Grand Wizard of the Kill Your Parents cult to get an insider's perspective of their belief system. I've lost track of the number of times I've had to explain this to you parent lovers. That's what we call people outside the cult. The Kill Your Parents cult isn't about killing your parents. It's just a name, like Nike. We even have the same slogan. Just do it. Actually, I think Nike have changed theirs over the years, so it's just ours now. People take things way too literally. It's about forgetting your parents, breaking free, cutting loose, living your own life by ending theirs. Symbolically. Are your parents currently alive? See, I feel like if I say no, you'll immediately think I killed them. Well, are they? No, they're not. Did you kill them? You fucking people. Okay, so the name wasn't literal, but was it possible that Lane Ashell misunderstood what this cult was teaching? We could be dealing with a situation in which a person claiming to be a devout follower of a religion misinterpreted that religion's doctrine, leading them to commit an act of violence. This was unprecedented. Aunts aren't meant to say these things, but Lane has always been an incurable freak. He never smiled, not even as a baby. And now that he's 18, I question whether he was born with the necessary facial muscles. Always wearing black, reading books by himself, it's not healthy. Should he read books in a group? Oh, don't be ridiculous, Arthur. I mean, he should learn croquet. Oh, Lane. This child that I'd sacrificed everything for. My firstborn, my heir, the apple of my eye. When I found out the sorts of people he'd gotten himself mixed up with, I asked myself, was this something I did? Did I drive him to this? Absolutely not. Lane Ashell is called to the station at the crack of dawn for a sunrise interview. He looked guilty. As a detective, you develop a sixth sense about these sorts of things. But you can't walk into a courtroom and say, Your Honour, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, look at the guy. You have to present evidence. The system's broken. The word suspect comes from the Latin suspa, meaning I don't trust that guy. And that whole interview, I was thinking suspa, suspa, suspa. Except I was thinking it in English. <laughs> we know all about you, Leno. Got the inside scoop. Someone very close to you, who shall remain nameless, told us you were a very weird son to have. I want a lawyer. Shut up and answer all that questions without legal representation. Don't listen to him, Lane. I know what you're going through, bruh. I lost both my parents at a very young age and I couldn't be chiller about it. Cause they were chuggy AF, man. They were really cramping my jive. No cap. What were their names? 
Come on, Marianne. Do you miss them? Every day! <laughs> Just I just I make them proud! <laughs> yeah, I don't think we're on the same page. Speaking of pages, see anything familiar? You have no idea what you're doing, do you? The conversation remains largely one-sided for the next 90 minutes. Why do you know why you did it? Plain, hello, hello, look at me! Fuck! But just when it feels like Lane is ready to spill the tea, his lawyer arrives and stops the interview. Why is my client answering questions without me present? He hasn't answered any questions. No, but I asked for a lawyer the second I sat down. I honestly thought he said, I want to loiter. And I thought, of course this little bastard wants to commit a finable offence, and he's stupid enough to ask for permission from a police officer during his murder interrogation. A flagrant violation of an adolescent's legal rights. Thankfully, Lane's defence attorney is a close friend, and she conceded that adding another stain to the department was as fruitless as adding another stain to King Kong's diaper. Defence attorneys. All they care about is money. What about the victims, huh? Who's thinking about them? Not me, that's for sure. They don't pay me near enough for that. Lane clammed up like a clam, which would have been a problem for lesser detectives. But Lane told us everything without saying anything. His body language, his facial expressions, the fact that he was part of a cult called Kill Your Parents, all of these things signaled to us that this twisted little crusade of his was far from over. One parent down, one parent to go. This was no longer about finding Deborah's killer. This was about saving Gilbert's life. Having iced his final crumpet for the week, Lane Ashell is spending the Saturday at home with his father. A perfect recipe for stabbed Gilbert. Well, not if we could help it. We couldn't help it, as it turns out. All the best we could do was stake out the Ashell residence. The key to a successful stakeout is keeping your mind occupied so you stay alert. There are various techniques one can employ. Movies, magazines, games, vibrating toys, periodically injecting yourself with small amounts of adrenaline. On a police stakeout, time is measured in depleting brain cells. He used to get one side and then mm. you're going to get the other. I don't even know what this is. Peanut. Ah. Uh, 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 oh. Where do I start? One. Up here. You've been with that one forever. I've been Gambit. Math, wake up. Edie, wake up. Math, wake up, you're gonna lose your job. I'm awake. But the best technique is the simplest and most obvious. Holding the knowledge at the forefront of your mind that innocent lives are dependent on your vigilance. Shit, what's been made? Well. How do you know? Lane's outside my window. Jesus Christ! Hi. I made you some muffins. Also, I'm not going to kill my dad. So, you don't have to keep watching my house if there's something better you could be doing to catch my mother's killer. You can't eat it, Edie. It's called the Kill the Parents Cult, Math. If it was the Kill the Detectives Who Aren't Related to You Cult, then I definitely wouldn't eat it. But I'm bloody starving! Ignoring her partner's advice, Detective Spoink eats Lane Ashell's cupcake. Walnuts. Yeah, he put walnuts in the muffin. I have an intolerance. I should have checked. That was my fault. But uh, other than that, it was delicious. Kid has a future. Assuming baking is a permitted extracurricular in maximum security. 
I thought that little prick had committed homicide number two. Sitting in that car, with my fingers shoved down the back of Spoink's throat, it really dawned on me what I stood to lose here. If we didn't close this case and save our jobs, I might never see crime again. Lane Ashell was proving to be a hard nut to crack. But while at the medical examiner's office getting Spoink's stomach pumped, the detectives catch a huge break. We got a hit on the fingerprint. I thought there weren't any fingerprints at the scene, other than those of the family. There weren't. <sighs> the fingerprint is a website where law enforcement officers can upload original tracks and other officers can vote on them. Our single, Stop Calling Us Pigs, got 10 hundred downloads in the first hour. We wrote and recorded it during the Lane Ashell stakeout. The music video came later. I think a lot of cops just voted because they agreed with the message of the song hidden within the lyrics. They voted because they recognised a paradigm of sonic majesty when they heard it. But whilst at the lab, we learned some other incredible news that was more pertinent to the case. I picked up my first guitar when I was about 11. It was just noodling to start. Can we get back to the murder investigation? Yeah, mate. Yeah. We must. We finally got back Deborah Shell's autopsy report, containing the one piece of the puzzle we'd been missing the entire time, which directly resulted in every wrong turn we'd taken. This case was about to get blown wide open. Just cut it before I open the folder. Turns out, Deborah Ashell was pregnant with fear when she died. I don't know how they tell that stuff. Something to do with adrenal glands or chemicals in the brain, but yeah. She was also pregnant, like with a baby pregnant, which um, was arguably a bigger deal. In the penultimate episode of Untrue Crime, Hogman and Spoink ask the penultimate question. Did Deborah's baby bump drive Deborah's baby to bump her off? You heard right. There's a fourth member of the Ashel family that may be the most guilty Ashel of them all. <laughs>